Hello there everyone once again. Just a little side thing I decided to make make today because at the time of recording it is the night before Daredevil Season 2 goes live and I for one am really 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 looking forward to it. But it did get me thinking since it's been about a year since the series first hit Netflix it made me think back and have me think over in my head why did I find this series so cool. So I decided to make this video as just a brief overview of why Daredevil Season 1 was as awesome as it was, and how we managed to do what it did. I think the first part of it seems to be the most obvious one, in that it is a Netflix series rather than just an original movie, as opposed to all the other stuff in the Marvel Universe, like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, etc, all those ones. They have to try to be able to cram in as much time and development as they can for their characters in just about to just around two hours. Whereas on the other hand of Netflix, you can create a whole bunch. While you can also create original movies, you can also have a much longer series. This is where Daredevil comes in with its series, totaling up with a 13 episode count, all of which have an hour each. That's 13 hours to develop all your main characters, your side characters, even the minor characters, and especially the villains. Which is one of the strongest points of the series I'll get into in a moment. One of the things the series focuses mainly on is the origin of Daredevil and how he started. And that's not usually the greatest thing that superhero films have done brilliantly in the past. There's loads of origin stories for characters, and we've seen it done quite a few times, so we understand the same beats. When it's a series, we get to understand it a little bit better because we get to see all the trials and errors, as it is, as this entire series is Daredevil's origin, as how he started out on the streets of Hell's Kitchen, where we got, how he got his powers from, what his life was like, and a man should tell it interestingly, but not just spending a slow amount of time building up to it. It has a lot of flashbacks, detailing him back and forth with important key moments in, in the main character's life, and how it was lead to this point. Even his like fighting skills and weapons and, in essence, his costume ended up evolving throughout this series. At first I was a bit adamant of the costume because it was just a, a typical like thrown together outfit, just a black shirt and a little bandana, but I ended up really liking it. It gets attached to, get attached to this little thrown together design as it's kind of the point, that when he finally gets a suit at the end of the series it becomes all the more worth it, as you finally earned up to this point. Does this suit look great? Eh, it could be better, but yeah, you never know. You could, once again, like the other suit, we could grow into it. Another bonus of having the main show have a long runtime gives us a lot more understanding and development for our side characters too. For instance, we have uh, Matt, Matt Murdock's best friend, Foggy Nelson, who we follow throughout this entire series as well. We get to see how he deals with the situations that go on in Hell's Kitchen, wondering what his best friend Matt is up to, some most times being oblivious of his um, antics as Daredevil, and we get to f find out where that goes. We also have an interesting side character, the, the main female lead, whose name I annoyingly escaped me. The, but the point is, is like we get to find out from a very disturbing beginning of where she came from, and how she was able to develop herself. We end up seeing how she managed to deal and struggle with all these events, and we grow to appreciate a character even after certain events that happen later on down the line out of the power. And then there is the best part of the entire show in my opinion, which is the main villain of the entire series. Uh, Wilson Fisk the Kingpin in this series is one of the best, probably the best thing Marvel has actually done in a long time. Because in the past they have made quite a few good villains, Loki from the Avengers is quite entertaining and very well done. But apart from him, are there any other Marvel villains in the entire universe that you can lovingly remember? I mean, you get to name a few off, but none of them have really left an impact on you. Wilson Fisk is the one that managed to leave a remarkably large impact on you. As you, once again, since it's an elongated series, we get to find out all the things about him, how he, where he came from, what his views are, uh, and how kind of dis psychotic and very much disturbed character he is. It's kind of haunting if you think about it. It's like, it's, and it's like how frightening it is to be around him. You don't really know what makes him tick. Even when you know what makes him angry, what doesn't? You don't know when he's going to flip out. Who he's going if he's just going to randomly kill someone just because? He's a very just a good individual. And also, I really like the fact that during some flashbacks, we get a few of him as well. And so we find out the parallels between Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk. We get to find out about how similar they are uh, from from their backgrounds, but ended up in two completely different places. 
it is a very very interesting in, in parallel and it's definitely worked well with a whole bunch of people especially since I was a bit wondrous about about since it's on Netflix it's you can definitely get away with a lot more than you could on normal television in that way it can be a lot more brutal than you can expect to be I mean yes normal t television ca can be brutal at times but with Netflix you can get away with a bit more stuff uh, a lot more implied action a lot more hard uh, harsher realities and uh, much more brutal fighting. The fighting is really top notch and I'm really impressed with all the amount of stuff they put into it. So, to close off this video, I'm going to finish with a few living thoughts in that of why I thought this series was a really cool thing. You managed to follow with quite a lot of interesting characters, entertaining fight scenes, and very, very interesting imagery and very well done. It does a lot more with the world building, seeing a lot more different sides of the Marvel Universe than we first did. I've uh, At this time, Daredevil Season 2 is just about to come out, and also just not too long ago we had the Netflix series Jessica Jones. Whether I talk about that in, or not is, uh, well, it'd love to be if I want to talk about it at a later date. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave it at this. If you've seen Daredevil this series, then I hope you enjoy watching Season 2. And if you haven't seen this series before, when if you have Netflix, I recommend you give it a watch. It'll be much more entertaining. I've, I've talked to many people about this series, and I don't know one person who's been relatively dissatisfied with the series. Everybody's managed to find a show entertaining in their own way. And I hope if you end up watching it, you enjoy it too. Have a nice day.